First, let me introduce myself. I am Herman Herman. I'm the director of the National Robotics Engineering Center, which is where you are right now. Okay. I'd like to welcome all of you here. Um, it's nice to have everybody here. We are honored today to have the U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Anthony Fox, here with us. We are also very happy to have Councilman Dan Gilman, uh, Councilwoman Deborah Gross, uh, Liz Pisbeck from Senator Casey office, and Kathleen King from Senator Toomey office here with us as well. Okay. We are very excited to have Secretary Fox chose Carnegie Mellon for this event. Uh, it gives us an excellent opportunity to showcase some of the technology that we've been working in the transportation area. In addition to the autonomous car here that's shown on the background, uh, Carnegie Mellon also developed many technology that increase the efficiency and safety in the transportation area, such as the smart headlight or the intelligent traffic light control. Okay. Uh, in fact, some of this research is funded directly by DOT, so thank you. Okay. Uh, without much further ado, let me introduce the next speaker, uh, Zoe Levinson. She is a graduate student in the Heinz College and pursuing a career in transportation. My name is Zoe Levinson, and like previously stated, I'm this year's Women in Transportation Fellow from Carnegie Mellon's TSA University Transportation Center. As well, I'm also pursuing my Master's in Information Systems Management at CMU's Heinz College. I have the pleasure today to introduce U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox. But first, I'd like to thank the Secretary for spending time with fellow students to discuss the future of transportation and how our interdisciplinary skills can shape the system that serves future mobility needs. Anthony Fox became the 17th United States Secretary of Transportation in July of 2013. His primary goal is to ensure that America maintains the safest and most efficient transportation system in the world. Secretary Fox joined the U.S. Department of Transportation after serving as mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina from 2009 to 2013. During that time, he made efficient and innovative transportation investments, which centerpiece of Charlotte's job creation and economic recovery efforts. As a member of city council, he chaired the Transportation Committee, as well as the Mecklenburg Union Metropolitan Planning Organization. Secretary Fox has served as an attorney in private practice, as well as held distinguished positions with the U.S. Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals and the Department of Justice. He received a law degree from New York University's School of Law and his bachelor's degree in history from Davidson College. As population continues to shift to metropolitan areas and our cities are rapidly evolving through new technologies, we look forward to Secretary Fox's experience and emphasis on innovation to guide us in developing a 21st century mobility vision and transportation system. With that, we welcome Secretary Fox. Zoe, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I've had a great, great visit here at Carnegie Mellon today, and I do want to thank uh, not only you, Zoe, but also uh, Dr. Herman Herman, the director of this incredible Robotics Engineering Center, uh, President Subra Suresh of the entire university, Stan Caldwell, the executive director of Traffic 21, the many students and faculty who've joined us today, as well as City Councilman Dan Gilman, who's also here today. Where is Dan Gilman? Thank you. I just want to say hello to you, sir. Um, I've had an opportunity today to see some amazing research, some amazing technology, and some amazing minds that are wrapping their heads around the transportation challenges in the U.S. over the 21st century. And I guess the way to start the brief remarks I have today is to say that when we think about the way transportation has evolved in human history, think about the transition from uh, mankind simply walking to using machinery to move that was controlled by the human being, which is where we've spent most of our time in transportation uh, since those days when um, man and woman were just walking. And now we're entering into a phase where the technology is becoming much smarter. 
much more capable of taking on tasks that human beings had previously taken on, all the way uh, to the possibility of driverless vehicles. This is a watershed moment in transportation. And part of the challenge we have as an agency and as a society is building the foundation for these technologies to take root. I'm here today not only to celebrate the fact that USDOT's investments in the UTC here at Carnegie Mellon, coupled with the incredible partnerships, public and private, across the disciplines within this university, with groups like Traffic 21 and TSET, that we are on the cusp of seeing this transition occur. And working together, we will build the kind of regulatory framework that assures that it gets integrated into the marketplace safely. One of the things that's also interesting about being here today, coming out of Washington, D.C., which some people describe as one square mile surrounded by reality, is that you are clearly focused on the future. That's what you're doing every single day here. And if I'm doing my job as Secretary of Transportation, I'm also focused on the future. You know, we just did a study that we call Beyond Traffic that looks 30 years out to the U.S.'s transportation challenges. And we see incredible, incredible opportunity, but also incredible challenges in front of us. When we talk about a population that's growing by 70 million people by 2045, when we talk about the concentration of many of those people into our regions, our mega regions, places that are highly populated, already congested, already constrained. When we look at the fact that we're going to need to move 45 percent more freight over that 30 year period, when we think about the fact that our climate and disruptive weather patterns are playing a role in disrupting our infrastructure, and we even have airports that are above uh, water level today that could be below water level within this 30-year period or by the end of the century. We also think about the fact that uh, technology is playing an incredible role in changing how we even think about movement. 3D printing, for example, has the potential to radically change distribution systems in this country when it comes to moving goods around. The idea that you can be in one part of the world and push a button and a product can be produced by a printer and move quickly to its ultimate location, that is a radical change in the way we've thought about moving goods. Or unmanned aircraft that have the promise to uh, change the way products are distributed. Obviously, we have challenges with making sure we safely integrate those vehicles into the airspace, but that is another part of the future. And then we also have to think about the ways in which our transportation system governance occurs. You know, it would be one thing if we had one consolidated transportation unit that could make decisions across the whole system. But just think about the fact that our highways are basically state managed, our transit systems are basically local managed, our freight rail systems are mostly private, our federal aviation system is mostly federal. And so as we look at how to integrate a seamless transportation network that incorporates these incredible innovations, it's going to take a lot of teamwork and it's going to take a lot of focus on the part of private and public, universities, philanthropy, all of us working together to make sure we not only make the right systems available, but that we have the right decision-making processes in place. So I'm going to tell you how incredible it is to come here and to see uh, a Cadillac that has all of this cool technology on it. Um, I don't think they felt comfortable letting me ride around in it, 
because I might have tried to drive it myself and may not have stopped on, on the way out. I don't know. Uh, traffic signals that adjust to traffic that are smart enough to know without having to be told by some central command center that there's a pile up and that they can move the traffic faster by going green on them. Some cool developments as part of vehicle to vehicle technology, which we are very bullish about at the US Department of Transportation and believe, frankly, that uh, the future of vehicle to vehicle technology is one that will enhance safety because when technology can see parts of the roadway that a human being can't uh, and can make use of it to avoid a collision, we ought to be able to adapt that technology and make good use of it. So as a department, we are extremely bullish on the types of activities that you're doing. And I do want to say one other point. It came up in the conversation I had with some of the students. Brilliant students, by the way. One of the questions was, you know, how do we take a more lean-in position as an agency with this new technology? And let me, let me just conclude by making this, this point. Uh, I've heard many observers note that the rate of technological change just in general across the world is increasing. You know, you might have gotten one big innovation that might have happened once every hundred years in previous eras. Uh, or maybe once every 50 years more recently, but we're now seeing just incredible changes happening within two or three years. And in transportation, as a sector, we tend to lag behind most of the other sectors in terms of integrating that technology. And what I want to tell you is, is that we at USDOT are committed to moving more rapidly and taking a more lean-in position on technology to make sure that we can uh, assure ourselves that it's safe, but to also make sure that it, re it reaches into the marketplace as quickly as is practicable. So we're going to continue working to build systems and processes and to use data and uh, all kinds of innovative ways to ensure that we're moving technology into uh, the marketplace as quickly as possible. Again, recognizing that our first priority, our first job is to make sure it's moving in safely. And so with that, I want to thank you all very much for having us here. Uh, we do have copies of our summaries of our Beyond Traffic survey. We are also looking forward to the input of many stakeholders into what our 30-year outlook says. And I invite you to go to dot.gov slash beyond traffic and to submit your comments. There's a lot of knowledge in this room and a lot of input that would be very valuable for us to receive before a final report comes out. With that, thank you very much, and I look forward to a couple of questions.